action. <laughs> the, this tutorial will show you how to rehydrate plant material for examination, for identification. You've been in the field, you've collected your specimens and it's some time before you can get to identifying the specimens. In that case, you can't just shove a, uh, the extra bits of plant material in the fridge uh, because they'll eventually go off. So the best thing is to press that extra material in your plant press that you can then use for identification. So that's the extra material which uh, you can damage in the process of identifying and still maintaining your lovely herbarium specimen. So that's what I recommended at the beginning. Now we're going to see how you actually can make use of that if, if you're in that situation where you're having trouble, you want to pull apart flowers but they're all pressed, they're dried and you can't see what's going on. You start to pull with your forceps or a needle the material and what you find is that everything just snaps off because it's dry and it's pressed. So we rehydrate. I've got two examples here uh, and in the right hand case there's a whole lot, it's a part of an inflorescence uh, with a whole lot of uh, flowers at different stages. You can see some corollas sticking out and in this case I've picked off some extra material I had of pressed dried flowers including some flower buds. Remember the same rule applies about looking at different developmental stages so it may be that uh, these open flowers look fabulous but, but maybe some stamens or other bits have fallen off so having some buds as well really helps avoid that problem of having lost things. Now the best practice would be to when you put the material ready to rehydrate is to have a little piece of uh, paper with and in pencil write your same initials, last name and collecting number and put that with this material so that as it's going through the sequence you don't get confused. I haven't done that but I'm suggesting that you do that especially if you're dealing with more than one bit of material at a time and especially if you've got more than one similar looking uh, flower. You could say, well, if I've only got one large showy yellow thing, I don't need to do that because I know that this is my collection number 13 and I know this is my collection 3. But if there's any risk of confusion, and certainly when I'm doing this for research where usually the bits and pieces are uh, multiple samples of, different, of this, uh, different collections of the same species or close, similar species, then to avoid confusion, I keep that collector's name and number with the material all the way through the process so that uh, I, I, know, uh, I know what's going on. So here in, in a laboratory we might choose to use something like this. These are uh, beakers. At home any, um, any jar that you have that's uh, of reasonable quality that's going to sustain uh, hot water is fine. So the easiest thing is to uh, put the specimen into, even drop it head first into the jar. And I'm doing it in a jar just to make it a bit more authentic for the off-campus students. Those of you here can use beakers if you want or you can use the jars, it doesn't really matter. Yes, I've managed to put those in separate containers. Uh, if I have my little tag, uh, not tag, but little piece of paper with the collector's name and number, I've put them in the right containers now. That's all right. I put a drop of detergent. You know, don't need uh, to have, I mean, if you're here in the lab, these are stored under the bench here and, and we'll have them out. If they're not out, you'll know where to look for them. Just one drop. At home, one drop of detergent is more than enough. Okay, you even diluted detergent it would be fine. So that's just to break the, the water barrier so that the water actually rehydrates the material. Now at the moment we've got an urn with boiling water but there are a couple of uh, things that you can do. So I'm not filling that right up and 
just the main thing is to cover. You see that the one on the uh, the yellow flowered item, and this can get hot, so uh, just be aware of that. If you see me moving to the bench quickly, you'll know why. Um, the beakers are more problematic because they, they will transfer the heat more quickly. So I'll just walk back, excuse me. Uh, you'll see that this is floating and you see that this is already down. Uh, that's good. So uh, what I like to do is cover that with um, either a, a glass watch glass, labor standard laboratory stuff, or um, or a petri dish at home. If you've got the lid of the jar, you can just put the lid of the jar on. Don't close it because, of course, there's hot water in there, and you'll get pressure build up, and it will it could be uh, nasty. So you just need to. What you're trying to do there is, it's the same as making a cup of tea in a cup. The traditional uh, Chinese, well, even the traditional way of making tea that you, with tea leaves, if you. If you, you warm the container first, yes, we don't need to do that. You put the tea in, you pour the hot water. If it's black tea, it should be boiling water. Okay, and here it doesn't matter if it's just off boiling. It doesn't matter if it's not 100 degrees. It can be, you know, hot. It could be 92 to 100 degrees. You put that water on and what happens? Half the tea leaves float. So what you do at home, of course, is you put the lid of the teapot on. And that creates this humid, envi uh, humid environment and the leaves will become wet and they'll sink. They'll rehydrate. You're, you're basically making a cup of tea, but we recommend that you don't drink the tea. <laughs> so the same here, by putting the lid on, it, cr it helps in that process. Now there's no need to do too much. And in fact, at home, um, you can see that, I can see that bits of this are still uh, not, not rehydrated. The best thing is that if you're in the lab or you're at home and you're doing a, 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 a session of identification, get these soaking, go work on some others where you don't need that material and come back to these. Give it 10 minutes at least. So 10 minutes later is ideal, but longer, it doesn't matter if it's in that for a few hours. What starts to matter is if you leave it in this overnight, that's probably okay, but then uh, things can go mouldy, so, and they can get knocked over, and you know, that will happen. So in the laboratory, we expect you to clean up after you. So when you're finished, um, uh, uh, rinse out the, the jars, put them back where you got them. If the, at the end of the session, the, uh, the detergent can be put away. Now, I will, because this one has sunk, I will show you the next bit, and that is that simply uh, best to best to do a couple of things. One is if you have a here we've got a squeeze bottle for water, and this says deionized water. But you can unless you're unless you're at, at Port Augusta or somewhere like that, you, uh, you could just use tap water. We're not doing any chemical analysis and the, sh uh, the short term nature of this, it, there's nothing in the water supply of most of Australia that's going to affect this. So I'm putting water in here because having rehydrated the samples, I want to keep it in water. Now, I'll get you The, the other one, still going. You can see down on it patches where it looks like it still could uh, take longer. You could give that a dab, but I'd be inclined just to leave it. So with this one, uh, you might want to have a second uh, Petri dish, one that you're going to uh, use. Now this is obviously, this is problematic at home if you don't have a microscope, but it, but it, but at least um, you can tr try the best you can uh, to, to make observations. Uh, the second one, if you've got a microscope, a uh, stereoscope, if you've only got a hand lens, the same, the same comments apply as far as, as, uh, as you can see and use them. 
If I put that there, just on a dry surface, the problem is, if you look very closely, you'll see shiny bits uh, on the, where the, 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 the light's hitting the water. So the trick here is using, actually using the deeper well and watch that shininess. Come in close and have a look. Watch as I, and, and if it floats, then you can use a bit of blue tack to hold it down. So I'll just hold this down for the moment. And watch at, as, as, as I cover it, those shiny bits disappear. Because what you've done is you've submerged the plant that you're trying to dissect and, and that the water layer is unimpeded. Of course, until you come along with your, up with your forceps or needle and where you dig into the water, of course, you get one of those boundary layers. So the point of having it in some water is you've got something rehydrated, so you want to keep it wet. It's not just keeping it wet to keep uh, making it work. Uh, making it okay, it's because uh, where, as you dissect, you want the bits to float apart or fall apart or be manipulable. If, you're, if you have it just something that's rehydrated in a dry petri dish, everything will cling together because of that same water effect. So you, you're basically you're submerging the material and you're um, using, ideally you're using uh, two pairs of forceps and or a forceps and a needle or a, or a razor blade and forceps and you're dissecting while you're looking under a stereoscope so you guys here with the microscopes have got it good and at home you're doing the best you can in terms of dissection and uh, and at least for example with uh, this case if you had this uh, bud even at home, that bud, if you wanted to check how many stamens, and in this case it's actually stamens and staminodes and style, how many were present, that would be large enough that you could pull it apart with, with two hands and then observe with a, a one hand and a hand lens. Yes? So um, the, the point of this is still worthwhile. Okay, when you're finished, Ideally, this is extra material you don't need. But in the worst case scenario, Tom, can you grab me some hand towel, please? Just a 30 centimeters or so. The worst case scenario is this is, you desperately need to identify this specimen. You've got no other useful specimens. Uh, you, you also want to return that material to the specimen. And then what you can do is you can actually take that bit and uh, just uh, dry off the extra excess material and once it's uh, obvious, not obviously uh, got loose water you can, you can uh, return that to a sheet of newspaper to your plant press and dry it. So it's possible in cases to uh, use that and then that fragment because it's a fragment would go in a cellophane bag with uh, a small uh, sheet of A4 uh, small bit of uh, paper with your collector's name and number uh, and in in the envelope so in the cellophane in the envelope attached to your specimen so that the material is not wasted if your specimen has plenty of material and that there's not that pressure to keep that material with the specimen, then you can toss it. Any questions about this? Okay, so um, a handy technique. Um, let's clean up and we'll get on with the other next bit. Thanks.